Hi, my name is Angie Carpenter and I'm the supervisor for our wonderful town of Islip. It is with a great deal of pleasure and excitement that I introduce the Blue Point Oyster, a short documentary that focuses on our town's commitment to enhancing shellfish production and improving the water quality in the Great South Bay. Our shellfish culture facility located in East Islip is just another example of reinforcing our town's commitment to the environment. Islip has a long and proud history of reseeding the Great South Bay despite the challenges like hurricanes, pollution, and overharvesting. And now, the town of Islip manages a very robust and active bay bottom leasing program that generates literally millions of oysters and clams each year. So sit back and enjoy this wonderful documentary that highlights one of Islip's hidden treasures the Blue Point Oyster. Blue Point Oysters historically are the best in the world. Blue Point Oysters were the only oysters that were allowed to be served in Buckingham Palace. People love them. There's a lot of time that goes into that one oyster. A lot of sweat and tears. They have a great history. And the time to get that oyster from one millimeter up to two and a half inches. It's about a year and a half. That's a lot of time. A lot of effort. There's such a demand right now for oysters. This is the town of Islip Hatchery. We produce oysters and clams here all year round. This facility was the town of Islip's bathhouse that was going to be demolished. The town took it over in 1976 and we renovated it to turn it into a hatchery. At the hatchery, we spawn oysters and clams. So we make the seed and we grow them to various sizes, in millimeters actually. We provide smaller seed or small oysters and clams to farmers to grow into market size so then they can sell to restaurants. And then we grow out the rest that we don't give to the farmers and we reseed the bay for resource enhancement. The Great South Bay in the town of Islip was noted for the production of shellfish and oysters and clams. Over the years, many commercial fisheries over-harvested the area and from the 40s to the 80s. They over-harvested so the population of shellfish was almost non-existent. That's one of the reasons why this program was started, to try to restore that back to nature. The town has a license program. We are licensing growers to grow oysters and clams in the bay to help revitalize the bay, help clean the water, help get the bay back into a cycle, a proper cycle. One of our biggest goals at the Town of Ice of Shellfish Hatchery is restoring the shellfish population in the Great South Bay. A top priority is oyster restoration. Oysters are known as ecosystem engineers. They are great for the environment. They're well known for filtering the water. They provide structure for other animals, so they make a reflex structure, and it provides a habitat for juvenile fish, smaller crustaceans, and smaller marine animals where they can survive. Carbon and nitrogen decline to assist in the elimination of brown tides. They rebuild the marine ecosystems, the marine diversity. In addition to the environmental benefits with filtration and things like that, it's just to help aid the Great South Bay to a natural environment and sustainability. And that's one of the reasons why the hatchery was built and the program was developed.
one adult oyster can filter anywhere from 35 to 50 gallons per day. It's amazing. When you have millions of them, what they do to our environment is incredible. It's one of the problems that we're having here in Great South Bay is there's not a lot of shellfish out there to remove all the algae in the water. The more clams or oysters we get out in the bay, the better visible your water quality is going to be. They consume algae, so they clean the water, which is good. They use the algae to grow. Not only that, they provide habitat for fish, crabs, and other organisms to live. These growers are growing oysters out there. They're keeping them in protected cages. So not only are they cleaning the algae out of the water, making the water a better environment, they are spawning, naturally spawning. So they are producing additional animals for the bay, which in turn will do the same thing. The goal of the town and this program is to replace the depleted hard clam and oyster population that's in the Great South Bay. This facility operates year-round and the prime part of the season runs from February to November where we start spawning the oysters and the clams for ultimate sale to the Bay Bottom leasing program. Typically we sell them at price per thousand and a lot of the farmers will purchase in the order of a couple hundred thousand to a couple of million. With the global goal of starting to become more sustainable in society, we are doing our part by providing aquaculture sites and leasing sites for farmers. Aquaculture and shellfish farming is a very low carbon emission practice. The oysters and the clams, the more we produce, the more they're helping the environment and filtering the water. Oysters dentrify nitrogen and they're carbon sequestering, meaning they absorb the carbon, which is great because we keep producing a lot. The Bay Bottom Leasing Program is in three phases. Phase one and two is approximately 125 acres, of which it's entirely leased out. There are 27 active shellfish farmers that are presently utilizing those areas. They vary in size from two to five acres, where they purchase seed either from the hatchery here in the ice slip or seed from other hatcheries, where they grow the shellfish to maturity, where they market it within close proximity of ice slip for sale to the various restaurants in the area. Phase three, it's the farms will be deep water. Deep water farms compared to our 26 leasing sites that are more shallow water. Phase three is a 1,500 acre parcel of Bay Bottom, which is in the Great South Bay. We will be leasing that area, starting with 10 new additional farmers each year. This way we control it and we make sure that it's operating professionally rather than try to lease out the whole area at once. We have phase three. It's a 1,569 acre parcel. We should be able to accommodate about 134 harvesters. I don't believe we will ever get that area fully occupied. We're starting out small. I believe 15 parcels originally and then expand 10 or so from there on out. So the plan is to lease 10 acres to each farmer and 10 of them each year. And what's going to happen is this is in deeper water out in the Great South Bay. The current Bay Bottom program is approximately in four or five feet of water where they have the floating bags. And that's the technique they use to grow the oysters and the clams to maturity. In the new phase three, once we start the leasing program, there will be no floating gear in the area. It'll all be bottom cages that will be used to grow the oysters and clams to maturity. We're doing this in a way so we don't actually destroy the substrate that's there. We're just attempting to enhance what is over there. We have filled up phase one and two. Phase three, we will soon be able to start permitting the use of this location. It would put a tremendous uh, population of both 
hard clams and oysters back in the bay, filtering the water, spawning, producing larvae that'll drift around the bay, hopefully set up in other locations. And it's a, just a revitalization process. Phase one and two has been very successful. Phase three is a deeper water location. It'll take a little bit more time and energy and money for our growers to get involved in that. But once it gets going, it should be very successful like phase one and two. The area where phase three is being placed is right by Heckscher Park. That area back in the day used to be a very ecologically productive area and probably not since the late 1800s. It's been pretty much depleted. No, no production or anything, no animals. If you go over there and just scuba dive or just take a look at the bay bottom, it's completely depleted, no life. So we thought this was a good area to potentially introduce, again, oysters and a shellfish population to potentially up the ecological production over there. 2009, the Bay Bottom program was actually started. That's when phase one and you know, ultimately phase two was started at 125 acres. We started a Bay Bottom licensing program in 2009. We started out with 95 acres and expanded in 2011 to 125 acres. It's anywhere from a one to five acre parcels. Back in 2009, we started producing oysters. Uh, they started coming in naturally. Oysters haven't been in the bay since the 1940s. Dating back to the late 1800s, there was mass overharvesting. And there were no shellfish regulations or harvesting regulations, so they were just completely depleted. In 1938, the hurricane came through, the famous hurricane, uh, covered over any remaining populations that we had in the bay. And since that time, there has been no commercial harvest of famous blue point oysters from the Great South Bay. It became over harvested, population declined, and to this day, it still hasn't rebounded. You would think we would learn from past history. The population has been so depleted, it's very difficult to conceive we can get it back to where it ever was. Today, for over 35 years now, we've been trying to repopulate the shellfish population. This year, we produced over 10 million clams and 13 million oysters. The town is the sole agency responsible for the management of 20,000 acres of bay bottom in the Great South Bay. We started with 125 acres of bay bottom management program, and we are expanding to an additional 1,500 acres. So therefore, it should not impact anything else that's being performed in the Great South Bay. Oysters are very valuable. They are sometimes two to three times as valuable as a hard clam. So our growers wanted to grow the oysters because you can get them to market quicker than a hard clam. They're worth more when you sell them and there's a desire for them. Oysters, for a selling standpoint, they take less time to grow. They take 18 months, it's like a year and a half. A clam can take two to three years to grow to a market size. If you go to local restaurants here, they're on the menu, there's a demand for them. You go out, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, depending on how much time you want to put in. Your oysters are, are in cages. Uh, you can shake them, agitate them. The more you shake them, you break up the leading edge. It helps the oyster develop a nice deep cup. And that's what the restaurants want. The meat inside is plump and delicious. If you want to just market your oysters uh, to a local distributor, uh, you can get 50 cents, 45 cents a piece, just push them out the door, or you can spend a lot of time. You can go for that perfect cup and go for that perfect oyster. It's a lot of time. Is it necessary? Individual choice. Getting top dollar for the oyster. Of our 26 leasing sites out there, we have 26 farmers. Some are newer operations, some are older. The new operations, they're new to this farming game, so we try to help them as much as possible. We have a bunch of different backgrounds of our farmers. Some are retirees, some are teachers, some this is their main source of income. 
They all work very hard. All different styles, different operations. It's fun to see what each farmer does in their unique style of farming. Some of them don't really have much staff. They just do it all on their own, which is incredible. You can make a good living out of it if you produce enough oysters and you have a rhythm. You have a lot of vendors and steady, consistent sales. You can make a good living. We've been very fortunate here at the hatchery that our mortality rate is very, very low. Most of the animals that we do grow survive, which is a good plus for all the farmers, so they're very happy in purchasing seed from us. Cornell Cooperative and uh, Stony Brook has done a study about various diseases that are inherent to along the, the East Coast, and they've taken samples of clams and oysters and particularly ours too, besides up and down the East Coast, to check how good are they against the diseases that could occur. And they found that by far we are the best seeds that they have found up and down the East Coast as a result of the study. So this aids the farmer and it gives them a level of confidence that when they purchase it, they're content that the final product, they will have a high outcome of production of animals that they can market to the very restaurant. We have probably 150, 180 people on the waiting list to get involved in growing oysters here, oysters, clams, or other shellfish. Once they get through the permit process, they come back to the hatchery. We will help them whatever they need. We show them the equipment, what they can use, how they can use it. It'll be a learning process for them, and we try and step by step go through the process with them to make them successful. We constantly get calls here. If they have stocking problems, they'll call and ask, what should we do? Oysters may not be growing quite as quickly as they wanted them to, so we will help them manage their farms. So we interact quite a bit. This new aquaculture program is it's just what the doctor ordered, so to speak, because in farming, you don't take from the natural resource. You, you bring in your little seed, and you maintain them, and you watch them grow, and you care for them, and then you harvest what you already brought in. So uh, you're not diminishing the natural resource. And if anything, when these oysters are adults and they're spawning, however many oysters you have out there that are adults, they're now contributing to a new natural population. And indeed, uh, since this program started and people started putting oysters out there, and, and uh, I think 2012 was the first oysters that were coming out, you could see evidence of the spawning behavior of their oysters on docks and, and hard substrate. You could have told even at that time that the aquaculture program had an impact on the natural set. There are millions and millions of adult oysters among the 24 plots that you have out here, 24 farms. They're, they're showing up all over the place. So we're definitely having a positive impact. You can't just farm oysters off your dock. You have to be in certified waters. It's important that you do it legally because you don't want to get someone sick if you're farming illegal farmers or in uncertified waters. You don't know what type of bacteria or levels of toxins are in that area, so you must do it in certified waters. The license regulations will be monitored by the DEC, and enforcement patrols will be performed by the Town of Islip Harbor Police to make sure that everything is in line with what's allowed or permitted on site so permits are very important. We have a permitting process at the town of Islip. We have a very long list right now, so people are very eager to get into the shellfish business or the aquaculture business. We developed an internship program just recently. We are providing a multidisciplinary educational internship for high schoolers and college students. It's a very hands-on internship they're submersed in all different parts and processes that go on at the hatchery. It can go from counting very small oysters and clams to counting algal cells or making nutrients for our algae. They're a really big help and they've helped us in a lot of our production this year. If you're interested in becoming a farmer, I would say please do research first because there's a lot of investment it's a lot involved. It's not just going out on your boat, looking at some oysters. There's a lot of troubleshooting. There's a lot that goes on. 
it's definitely rewarding in the end to watch all your hard work turn into something beautiful. It's a great program because we will get oysters back in the bay. They will be doing what they need to do. Unbelievable program. It's great for the environment. It's great for the bay. It's great for our growers. It's a win-win situation for the town. Whenever I tell somebody that I'm an oyster farmer or what I do, I produce oysters from a sperm and egg. Like, wow, you're doing God's work. I'm like, I never thought of it in that way. I mean, I love it, I just think it's fun. But I also love watching things grow from literally nothing. It's incredible to see that we're capable of making an oyster produce, that there's something that they usually do in the wild. So I think it's pretty cool to actually watch an oyster develop from nothing into something. And then we're kind of supplementing what we're taking from the environment. Us humans take a lot, so the least we can do is provide a few oysters. You can only have a true Blue Point oyster from the Great South Bay. They're tasty, they're delicious. Whatever the characteristics here are in Great South Bay, it provides unique quality, taste for these oysters. Connecticut sells a Blue Point oyster. North Carolina, Virginia, even Florida, they're all selling Blue Point oysters because of the quality in the name. However, they don't have the quality and the same characteristic as a true Blue Point Oyster grown here on the island.